All right, for the sake of time, I know I got some folks that are going to be jumping on, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go get ahead and get started. Hey, Dane, how are you? Um, because we've got Hello. quite a bit to, hey, nice to have you, uh, quite a bit to cover tonight. So I will start with the announcement. So we're joined today by uh, Dr. Uh, Toley from uh, Florida, so University of Florida Extension, and he's going to be talking to us tonight about create, creating engaging experiences for teens, which is um, a topic that was talked about during the last session. So we're really glad to have him. Um, I do have several announcements that I'm going to get through uh, before we get started today. So uh, first of all, I have sent out the volunteer engagement survey. I know several of you have already completed it, and that's phenomenal. Um, but if you have not, I will share this PowerPoint again in the recap email. So we use the engagement survey just to get it better, uh, capture the input, the, the impact that our volunteers are making throughout our state. We use it for annual reports. Um, we also have some really important questions in there that we'd love to get your feedback uh, information on. And so if you haven't had a chance to do that, I encourage you all to do it. Uh, and I will send that link out again. We're going to keep it open for about another week. Uh, just a reminder that we are still doing the regional volunteer conversations in collaboration with several of the volunteer specialists throughout um, the South. We do get volunteers and leaders from throughout the nation on those regional conversations. And the one for next month is on developing partnerships locally and um, regionally. So we do encourage you to register for that. I will send a link out to that one as well. The next one is going to be July uh, 27th. And National 4-H Conference registration is open. Yay. Um, they, we have been told that they're waiting to see about the occupancy. So because of COVID restrictions, we're still limited with how many people we can put in each cabin, which has put up the rate of uh, lodging. So, But um, registration is open September 30th to October 3rd. They're also still accepting proposals for... Um, Submission. So if you want to go and you want to present or if you want to see if you can get, um, you know, a presentation in, I encourage you to do that. We had a call last night or I think for last for the advisory committee in there. We're still looking for uh, individuals to prevent present at national conference. So look for that link from me as well. And the newsletter continues to be out. So if you haven't read the last edition, encourage you to read that. I will send a link out and it's always in the signature of my email. So if you've been getting my emails about the webinar, I do encourage you to read that in the news. And then if there's other information that you'd like us to put in there, feel free to just reach out to me. And let me know. All right. So we're going to move on about the topic for tonight, which is creating engaging experiences for teens. And so um, Andrew's going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, he's got a presentation that he's going to bring, but I do have some research that I've just pulled um, more specifically about uh, teens and why they participate, what they're looking for from uh, programming like 4-H. And so some of the reasons that we, and we talked about these on the call last week, um, teens not participating in some of our programming some of the reasons that they stated in some of the research was just lack of awareness about, you know, potential programs like 4-H, uh, not having parents that were really involved and maybe parents are not um, understanding of the program and the benefits that it provides youth. Also, and we've discussed this before, just lack of transportation and access. So potentially if you've got, um, hold on one sec, I'm going to, Hold on, we've got some static. Okay, if you've got, um, you know, limited amounts of delivery modes or if you have limited access to your clubs, uh, there might be an issue with transportation uh, times during the day. So we know that uh, some of our teens are very heavily involved in other extracurriculars. So how can we make sure that they still have access to 4-H opportunities? When are we offering them? What alternatives can we provide? Lack of finances is always going to be a thing. So that's one of the reasons why we like to provide low cost um, opportunities if, if those that's an option. Um, and then youth 
or teams really thinking that the program is work. And so the way that we uh, message the opportunities, and like I said, this is not just all youth, this is the youth that have chosen not to participate, sorry, teens, um, chosen not to participate. One of the reasons that they said it is because it looks potentially like work. And so um, what are some other reasons do you think teens are not participating in programs like 4-H? Does anybody want to share? Um, I know in particular, I'm the co, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm the co-leader for our 4-H group at the school I work at. Um, our school is based on a military installation. Um, so like, I know we do it primarily on Saturdays, but, um, we seem to have trouble getting with our high school um, to try and get word around and everything because a lot of the kids that go to the high school who are interested are unable to gain access onto the military installation. Um, uh, and the other problem is, is that it's part of our school's club activities. So a lot of parents are... <laughs> unfortunately more invested in their kids joining like sports club activities that also ha tend to happen on the weekends so that's in large part why we tend to not have a lot of kids join our our groups um but also just because simply we have no real way of in particular i have no real way of getting like high school kids to be able to come on to the base to the school for our club activities. So those are great comments. So like, look, you know, potential location, like, and like you said, there's, there's barriers, you know, to access for you. Um, but, you know, just also mentioning like the, the, the Saturday club concept too, you know, and competing with, other, with sports and other extracurriculars on the weekend, but also, a Saturday club, you know, or a Saturday opportunity, um, you know, typically is, is a great option if, if it's, you know, not alternative of that would be, you know, during a weekday. So um, some barriers there, but also just, um, you know, ways that you've tried to make your program more accessible as well, and does create barriers. So a couple of the comments on, whoops, I had one. So getting teens to show up and and what some of the comments that were made by teens was uh, if you can create an ambassador. So you're thinking about teens recruiting teens. So your uh, teens in your programs, they're well connected uh, with other uh, organizations, with other youth, you know, using them to help create this ambassador role that potentially um, helping get other teens in your program. So a lot of, uh, a lot of several, um, agents have mentioned this, bring, uh, you know, bring another member or bring a friend to, you know, um, to 4-H meetings. So another opportunity for you to, to recruit, uh, more teens that way. Also creating these advertisements that spark interest. So when we think about how we're uh, creating these, potential advertisements? Are we designing them to recruit an interest teens? Are we designing them to recruit an interest parents? So, you know what, well, whereas typically we're looking um, to market those to that parent population, maybe specifically we need to think about how we're targeting teens with our messaging. And then we know that our teens are really heavily using social media. Uh, so, but what social media are they using? Are they using Facebook? We know they're they're typically not using it, at least not regularly. Um, they have a profile, but it's not accessed uh, daily. However, they're using, still using Snapchat is what I hear, still using TikTok, you know, still using Instagram, per primarily the Instagram stories. So the ways that we're targeting them, you know, with those social media efforts. Um, and then involving parents and in any of opportunities where you can educate, orient them to the program. So what are the benefits that 4-H is providing them outside of some of the other competitive uh, or I guess competing extracurricular opportunities that are offered? And then those incentives, and we know those, you know, having 
transportation, if that's an issue, you know, uh, moving the location of our club, if we have that option to do that, uh, food, awards, other things that potentially could entice them. And I know we've done many of these things. Um, and then what teens have said that they want out of school programs, and this is within these articles, is that flexibility in the variety. So um, having, you know, variety of activities, not more specifically just one, but we have several you know, ways that youth can get in, involved in, in various clubs. So do we have variety of access within our, our parish programs? And then the flexibility, and, and actually Dane already mentioned this a, a little bit too, but having uh, different times in, in different days that, you're, that those opportunities are offered that they can plug into. Um, we do provide the hands-on activities, so we know we can, you know, check that box. And if when you're creating opportunities for teens, they like that collaboration and that connection with other teens. And you'll see, you know, the opportunities for them to have a voice in the program, but also work with others, um, collaboratively build those relationships. And, you know, they're often looking for those opportunities and they want to be respected too. Um, you know, the respect piece gets a lot more important the older that they get. And so having a voice in, in the, the program, the direction that's going um, feeling like they're respected throughout that process and then having the opportunity to make connections, um, collaborate and communicate with others in a convenient location and hours, being that they're uh, very busy during that time of, of their life. So just a few things that have been stated in the research. Now, uh, sorry, you had a comment? I apologize. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do apologize. Um, I saw... Andrew had put, uh, said a question on the chat, and I tried to answer on the chat, and it's not allowing me. Uh, I, I do apologize. Um, the Yes, the high school is off the base. We are a kindergarten through eighth grade um, school. Um, and in large part, because of a lot of the incidents that tend to happen uh, on military bases throughout the United States, a lot of base access has been much more strict than what it used to be when I was a child on the on that base. Um, I've actually tried to go to the high school to work with the high school uh, administrative staff about setting up a... Um, like a a junior leader uh program uh with the high school at least at the high school location because uh, because unfortunately again of how difficult it is to get a lot of a lot of them onto the base to our yeah. school so the reason i wanted to ask about that is i've done a lot of work with military bases and working with youth on military bases and things like that, the 4 military partnership. So actually, I was kind of excited to hear, well, this guy's got a got a club on a military base. How cool is that? So if you don't mind me asking, is it an Army, Air Force, Navy? It's, a, it's a joint military installation base. Um, we actually have pretty much every branch of the military uh, set up there. Do they have, do they have the, the typical... Uh, support systems, the CDCs, the youth, the the youth development centers, the teen centers, and yep. things like that. They typically have those those centers. The reason I, I'm mentioning this is that 4-H is supposed to be going on in those particular centers as as part of the overall. And actually, <laughs> actually, I'm going to show you a website here later that's going to have that was actually developed for military programming here in Florida, and we also support military bases around the world. And this is, it has some, some information on, on doing that. And, and what we do is we go on and train staff. So it's really interesting that, that you have this club. So tell me just a little bit more about your club, because I think it's really going to add to the richness of our discussion on, um, is it's a team club that you're trying to do on a base and we're having difficulty getting people on base. And, and that's a true story. I was born and raised in Georgia. And when I was young, I could literally drive on Fort Benning. I could drive up and down with the ranges that they would, the, the soldiers would be out there shooting on the ranges, walking on the side of the road. Tanks would drive by. It was no big deal. Nowadays, 
if you don't have a pass and your insurance is out of date by one day, or it says Andy E. Tolley instead of Andrew Ernest Tolley, they may not accept that. It's very, you're right. It is such a different world now on the military bases getting on. It's, it's tight. Yeah. My son's and, also in the Air Force, so it's. Yeah, and so essentially um, with our particular club, like I said, we're K through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our K through four or K, K through three, which we label as the Clover Buds. Um, so we do a lot of, you know, small time things because in large part we've had uh, we've had arrangements set up with in particular a farm that's not too far from our location where we would go there and we would do volunteer work learn how what it's like to work on a farm and everything uh, and so on and so forth um so in large part that's why we're primarily only on the weekends is so we can fit those into our schedule without any any possible uh conflicts we also have another location where we go cross river um to plant trees and wildflowers and learn more about like our ecosystems and everything that's cool uh and unfortunately like because we are a part of the school's after school activity club sessions um we primarily had to fit within those curriculums and those budget constraints so yep. it's really hard for us to from what I've seen and what I've understand to branch out and get more open involvement. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, in regards to what you said with uh, the teen center and everything, uh, funny enough, like I actually have done some stuff with our local teen center, granted not 4-H. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I say 4-H, they go, eh. but well, in, in particular, um, I play a card game called Magic the Gathering. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a local game shop that I ran a kids program with where I taught kids how to play. Mm -hmm. And I kind of swung over by the teen center, talked with the people in charge there, and had a little arrangement going for a little while, and then the pandemic hit. Yeah. Um, but as far as I know, we don't have anything 4-H-Y set up up with uh the youth center or the teen center mm -hmm. uh, but hearing this and everything i'm definitely going to uh get in touch with them again and find out if maybe we can get some kind of thing going some kind of arrangement or whatnot there may be some potential there here in florida that's run through the local count we call them county agents here in florida I'm, i may be at the state level but the actual programming is run through the county office and that may be something that reach out to who your county i think y'all call them parishes there in louisiana yep. your parish people where they see what kind of things they're going with already to maybe it'd be a great place to partner or yeah, if and not a whole lot going on I, I i see that's a great use of a of a volunteer that has access to base and let me tell you those are hard to come by <laughs> yeah well and like I said, I'm I'm currently a co-leader, um, but our current head leader, he's planning on retiring. So he's trying to get me all set up to learn everything I need to to take control. Mm -hmm. And so he sent me all the links for all of these webinars. So I know, like, I get to learn, you know, what it what I need to do to help run a program and learn a lot of the intricacies um, to, ma to make sure, you know, A, I'm doing things more, I would say, properly. Mm -hmm. um, so that way I'm not, you know, doing something wrong or I'm going the wrong direction about things. Yeah. Uh, but again, the school that I'm also the employee there, but I'm also a former student and I'm a former uh, 4-H member yeah. as a kid. And so when I came back to work at the school and found out we still have a 4-H club going on, I was very much excited, volunteered almost right away. And then after about two years of doing it, um, the leader, you know, 
said, hey, I've talked with the agent, and uh, we want you to be more hands-on. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to... I'm going to move on so I can get to, to my presentation, but I do. Apologize. what I would like to say is I, I really appreciate what you're, you're saying here and maybe reach out to those folks and Megan knows how to get a hold to me and the whole, and I am, like I say, I'm part of that military partnership, both here, they call it CONUS and OCONUS, and we want to start throwing the lingo around, but we, we, we do some things and you're going to see the website here. You're actually going to get a flyer that's going to have that on there that'll help you in being able to, uh, what am I trying to say? To, to find a lot of good resources that the bases have access to, but it's open to the public. I mean, y'all, you can see it. It may be something really cool that, that you can then go and share. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my screen share, but I really appreciate you you calling that out. And hopefully, hey, can everybody they, see the presentation now? It looks good, and I, I, I just wanted to say, Dane, I tried to upgrade your settings to see if you have access to the chat, but I'm not sure what that if that helped or not, so I did try that. So um, Let me give it a quick look, Sue. Great. All right, so, and then, yeah, Dr. Andrew to, uh, Tolley from oh. the University of Florida. Yeah, oh, did I say it wrong the second time? You had it right. Oh, okay, great. Um, oh, your screen go away? Maybe I so. Know. This, I'm trying to get where I can see the chat, but I can't see the chat now. So I well, I can. I will monitor that for you. So great, there you go. Looks good. Okay, so let's talk about engaging teams. Teens. I said teams because I'm on teams. I got teams on my brain. If you see me looking over here, I'm using a two-screen setup. So I'm looking at my screen over here, and y'all seeing the side of my face. It's not I'm ignoring you, and I'm not certainly not checking my phone. So. The reason I, I, I sent a little chat to to see if I could get everybody to put something in the chat. So what we're going to do, we're going to practice right now. What I would like for everybody to do is find your chat. And I would like to put you to put your favorite animal in the chat. But don't hit send yet. Type in your animal. I'm going to go three, two, one. And when I say send, everybody puts it in at the same time. I'm going to give you three more seconds. Two. I just stopped presenting. One. So we got to put our favorite animal. I got to put mine in here. One, two, three, go. Yeah, we figured this out. Good. Because we're going to need to know how to do this for this next activity. So we're going to play a game here in a minute. And actually what we've just done, this is called a super chat. So if you're meeting virtually, this is a way that you can actually use in your clubs where everybody can have their chance to say something virtually in the chat. And that way everybody can hit it at the same time and y'all can talk about it. And we can use this for all kinds of different things. <laughs> Dane just went sideways, that was fun. Um, but it can go to all kinds of different things. Actually it's a tiger, but an Auburn tiger, right? Not a gator? I, I, I tried to see if maybe if I arranged my phone around for a second, it would let me, and it's still not allowing me, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just my phone does not like me at this current moment. Well, I guess what you get to do when I, when I say three, two, one, chat, you can just say your, your answer. So I'm going to go back to presenting. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play. Let me tell I guess I got to tell you about me. So I have 29 years of experience as an extension agent. I've been a, a county agent in two different states, four different counties, and I'm currently the a district regional specialized agent with state responsibilities for volunteers here in the state of Florida. I have worked in urban, rural, suburban, all kinds of counties, all different types of, of folks, and I've worked with teens at all levels from the local level all the way up to international. So I've worked with a lot of different teams and lots of different things. And what I was asked to focus on today is about working with teens, engaging teens. And I want to do this in a conversational mode. So if you feel after we play, we're we going to play a game next. But after we get through with that, if you want to, to come on and say things or put things in the chat, uh, my chat monitor will just tell me what's on it. So I don't have to, to jump back and forth. But now we're going to play a game. 
This game is called Name That Item. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an item. You're going to type what it is in the chat box. And then I'm going to say three, two, one, send. And when I say send, you have to, to tell me, type it in the chat what it is. Here is the first item. That's the first item. Type it in the chat. Five, four, three, two, one, send. I can't. Window crank. Yes, it is a window crank. It is a window crank. Did everybody get window crank right? They did. Window crank in car, car window roller. I couldn't remember. I said the thing that rolls the window down. <laughs> the thing that rolls down the window. All right. Well, let's look at the next one. Y'all got the hang of this. Here's the next item. What is that? Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, send. TikTok. What's, what are people putting in? <laughs> They're putting TikTok icon, TikTok emblem, emblem. Somebody said TikTok question mark. And I think it, I thought it was TikTok, but I put, I'm not young enough to know. Um, <laughs> that okay. is TikTok. Here and is Sarah's, the Sarah next says I item. Love it. Yeah, good deal. Type that in the chat box. 10987654321 one. Send. The rotary dial phone. Rotary phone? Anybody Actually, else? Yeah, I messed that one up, but um, rotary dial phone. That's an ancient flip phone. Rotary no, dial phone, phone, <laughs> yeah, phone, rotary phone. I put, I was typing 1980s, wants that phone back, but I accidentally sent 1908. But, um. <laughs> All right, well, here's another one. 1098 one send. This one's a little harder. Oh, okay. I know okay, this one. What is yeah. it? Reddit. What? Never what seen it. Somebody said never seen it. That's Jeanette fair. said Reddit. Yeah. Reddit. That is Two years. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. Bum bum bum. Ten nine eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, send. Micro microwave dial? Uh, good guess. Anybody? No. TV dial. A TV what? dial, TV knob. I put sundial. I mean, I don't sundial. Know. <laughs> Sarah said a time. TV dial. That's back when kids were the TV changer. If anybody remembers that, your parents say, let's go change yes, the channel. You got to run up and change the channel. All right, here's another one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, send. I see. I can only see one person, and she's giving me a blank stare. <laughs> what is it? Okay, so Lynette said LinkedIn question, question. Sarah said no clue. <laughs> Jeanette said reverse blue man group. It's, is, this, is, it, is it my is it my it space? It is my space. I thought oh, so. Wow. So interestingly enough, my space has come back. Has it not? It's it's music now, so that that's a that's also a team thing. They're back on there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you got me. So. I have a hard time finding the icon. All right, <laughs> here is another one. What is that? Ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. Send. Uh. Okay. Card, uh, yeah, gear shift. 
<laughs> what are people putting in the chat? Uh, gear shift, car shifter, uh, shift, and, and Lynette said stick shift. Yes, so all the above. That one. <laughs> it's a gear shifter from a five speed. But here's the bonus question. How do you get it into reverse? <laughs> Anybody remember how to get them into reverse? Never drove stick. Oh. Anybody no, nobody type that I chat or turn on their and be bold and turn on their uh, microphone? Lynette knows. Lynette, how do you do that? How do you go reverse? The only time I drove a stick shift, I went in the ditch. <laughs> all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, that's easy to do, people. Megan, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, it's on. Yes, it's on. You push down on the gear shift, put it over, and then pull it back into reverse. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Unless you're in a ditch. Then you get out and you flag down the, the, the truck coming by to help pull you out. All right. Okay, and here's no, the last I've one. Never, Say that again. I, I've never known anyone who actually owned a stick shift until relatively recently. So I've never been able to drive one. Yeah, I've heard them jokingly called nowadays. These are actually a a car um, anti theft device because few people know how to drive them anymore. It's kind of a, a tongue in cheek kind of thing. Uh, but I think there's some truth in that. All right, here's the last one. Name these three people in order from left to right. I'll give you 15 seconds to do this one. I think I need to get my wife for this one. That's okay. <clears throat> I know the one in the middle, but... 10, 9, 8, 7, 6... Two of those three in order. I know the middle one. Five, buddy. four, three, two, one. Enter to put it in the chat. Who are these three people in order? Uh, Who's the person on the far left? I think Lynette got it. She said What's Trisha that? Yearwood, uh, Lionel oh. Richie, and Dan Seals. But then she also maybe question mark Michael Murphy. Let's go on the far right. Well, it's either Dan Stills or Michael Murphy. Which one is it? I think it's Michael Murphy. I think you're right. All right. But I can't <laughs> drive a stick shift. I, I the middle one is Lionel Richie, but... That's Lionel Richie in the middle. And that was actually his cover from the Can't Slow Down album. And this is Trish Yearwood's first album. I think what you call it, Trish... And Michael Murphy, the only reason I knew about him this past weekend, I got to hear him in concert. And I didn't even realize he he the song Wildfire. And it's been in my head ever since. Well, you can't call him Wildfire. I'm like, wow. Like, but, what's that? Funny enough, I was actually uh, watching and listening to the video of We Are the World uh, from USA for Africa. Mm-hmm. That was written by Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson. Yep. That's why I recognize Lionel Richie like right away because I've just seen a video of him recently. So. Mm -hmm. So let's think about it. So tell me, please feel free to to turn off, turn on your mics, and just join the discussion or type in the chat. I I can't see the chat while I'm presenting, but what was the point of the game? To see how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> to see out, how out of tune we are. I oh, got somebody else. Out of tune. Uh, N Nikita uh, said to engage everybody. I, I could agree with that one. So the point of the game was to kind of talk about this second point right here. And we're talking about reference points when we're, when we're working with teens or, or younger folks. That So the question I had here is the point of the game, yes, to engage folks and have something kind of fun, but also there's a purpose to it. And that is to have us start thinking about those reference points when we're working with teens. 
So do you think teens would have done as well as we did on this particular activity? Or which ones do you think they'd have gotten easily? Uh, I would say in particular, like the uh, the TikTok for sure. Uh, pos- possibly the gear shift. Um, I think the rest of them, they kind of would have been scratching their heads or coming up with probably some of the most far-fetched um, answers. Which could be kind of kind of amusing to listen to. So, Absolutely. And then I wanted to talk about, think about our teen years when we were teens. And for me, that was back in the 80s. So I'm a child of the 80s. I remember when Lionel Richie put those put his songs. I remember when he was still a member of the Commodores. And so were our teen years that much different from the current current experience that teens are having? I can't see the chat if people are putting things in the chat. So I think that a lot of ways they're similar, but in a lot of ways they're different. Connectivity nowadays is certainly a thing. For sure. Sorry, you might. My mic was muted, but um, yeah, t- Sarah said technology and social media are very heavily involved now. Um, yes, it is. Not- I mean, back when I was a teenager, social media was something on a on a notebook, noteboard in or at your school. That was your social media. Yeah, I remember passing notes in class. Passing notes, <laughs> but in lots of ways, they're the same. When you were a teenager, did you like getting together with your friends and having a good time? Did you like hanging out with your friends? Did you like doing things that teens probably still enjoy doing? So it's not, yes, there were differences, but there are also some good similarities as well. Yeah, the the connections, I think, have almost gotten more important, I guess, post-pandemic, at least for what. I've seen so. Yeah, it seems like point. like the the pandemic that that's I mean that one year is I don't know how any team's going to be able to f- from the past or or even moving forward. It's just been such a different year that people just won't quite understand how all that went down. So oh, let's go back. So. Again, as we go through this, and I always like to put this in my presentations, as we think about this, let's think about how can we apply what we're learning to working with the teens in our clubs or in our groups or whatever, however it is that y'all work with your, your teens. And so keep that in mind. And I would also say as adult learners, I want to hear how you're going to be using, how you process these things so I can also share with other folks as I teach more about working with teens. So as we go through this, Think about about that. Now, this next part I call Andyisms. Now, Andyism is just something that I have created over the course of my career that that is just sometimes amusing, sometimes sometimes thought provoking, and we don't have enough time to go over them all today. But I'm going to talk about some of them. And one about club work. This is about club officers. So, my Andyism about Oh, I see that one, Megan. I, I finally figured out how to get my, my chat working. So if you can have as many officers as you like, but every officer must speak at every meeting. Now, what on earth does that mean? And why on earth do you think that would be a good Andyism? I'll give him a few minutes to respond, or a minute on the chat there. Yeah, y'all can chat or talk. I know at least one person's mic works because I've heard her. <laughs> yeah. And I know Dane's works and he's brave and he's got the video running too. So I'll ask a different question. We, of all the so, uh, 
I have a comment to that. I, I just think like that engagement, having every every team have a piece of it is critical so that they feel like they're involved, engaged, and like a, a critical piece of that club meeting. So yeah, I agree with you on that, but yeah, you should try yeah. to encourage and the way I see it is deeper than that when it comes to to our vault to our youth development. But let's just talk about this. And then my next bullet point, we'll kind of see the deeper meaning behind it. So what would you consider the most worthless officer or useless? If you've ever been in a club or with a group, what one officer is like, yeah, I got this title, but I don't do anything. Which one is that of all the officers out there? Which one might that be? Parliamentarian. Parliamentarian. That could certainly be. <laughs> I was a parliamentarian once, but that was with a group of people that like to beat each other over the head with parliamentary procedure. <laughs> but yes, that could certainly be one. What's another one? That that's a good example. Vice president. Yep. The vice president steps in when the president's not there. What happens if the president's there all the time? So the reason I have this, a lot of times a club leader will ask me, well, can I have all these different officers because I want my kids engaged? My answer is you can have as many officers as you want. However, if you're going to be creating more officers, we have to make sure that they, that they own their job and that they feel like their job is important. Because if we look back at what Megan was saying about teen engagement, they like to be engaged in the process. So if I come to a, a club and I'm the vice president or the parliamentarian and I've never had any reason to speak or do anything, pretty soon you're like, eh, you know. But there's one more deeper point to this that I want to make. And that's this. Just because you're not there doesn't mean your job doesn't have to be done. That's the deeper meaning. So if I expect the vice president to talk at every meeting and let's say we have to give the vice president a job, and let's say that they're in charge of community service. And let's say that weekend they have a baseball game. It happens a lot. Does that mean that when the vice president's time to talk comes around that we just skip it? The answer is no. Because what we're trying to do again is that teen engagement and have them really, and sometimes it's, you know we can have youth other than teens have these officer positions, but it forces them to, to almost own that job. And we kind of hold them to it, we being the, the adult mentors. And we're gonna talk about mentoring here in just a little bit. And it's not a mean thing. And it's one of those things to say, oh, you're not gonna be here, great. Who's gonna do your job? Who's gonna make your report? Who's going to do something? Well, I don't have a report. Well, you, you know, then you need to have somebody at least stand up and say that because that is their responsibility. And the, and the person, Again, it gives them that ownership of the job. And I actually really embraced this philosophy several, many years ago when I had a team that wasn't going to be somewhere. And I was like, oh, man, what are we going to do? He said, he said, it's my position. And I made sure it was taken care of. And it was a light bulb moment for me learning from this team. And I'm like, wow, we give these youth these opportunities. But now we give them that opportunity to really own that position and then make sure that Whoever is going to be talking for them is prepared to talk and will be able to. So does that club work kind of make sense? Any other comments on on how that one kind of works? And that's that's an Andyism. Sounds like somebody's trying to talk. Dane, I think your mic might be maybe go mute and then um, try again, maybe. And then unmute. No, no, it's not. Oh. Well, if we if we remember, we can type it in the chat and we'll come back to it. But I'm going to go on. So teens okay. in general, even good kids do dumb things. A lot of times we in 4 oh, we got good kids. They they teens are teens. Their brains aren't necessarily developed all the way at this point. Kids can still do what I can call a dumb thing. They can still 
run their mouths. They can still say, say things. They can not be responsible or do other things. And as mentors of teens kind of understand that even good kids. So, so it's one of those things that, that we're not just looking at, at, Oh, these are good kids. They'll never do anything bad. Or these are bad kids. They're always doing stuff bad. No, they're teens. They're kids. Sometimes kids, no matter who they are, will do dumb things. Sometimes they'll do great things. But the point to really remember is that dumb things can lead to positive youth development. What that allows you to do, yes, I can see your chat. What that allows you to do as that mentor is to have that discussion with that teen in the, that respectful way when they talk about respect, say, hey, let's think about what just happened. Let's think about what could we do differently and let's make that into those those youth development positive experiences for our kids. So they didn't get their job done for the club meeting that they were supposed to. That's time to say, hey, hey, Johnny, you know, you were supposed to, you know, we missed having your report from the last meeting. Oh, I forgot. So no, we really, we really need you to have that report as part of your job to be able to do this. There's something I can do to help to be that supporting mentor to give them that opportunity to learn. Here's mentoring. Volunteers are mentors. That's what I see volunteers. Everyone on here is a mentor. There's another, another game. If you go to the VCOS conference, you're gonna to get to play this one with me, but I'm doing a workshop, hopefully on, on icebreakers. And one of the icebreakers that I like to do is really with, with my volunteers, is really get you in that mindset that no, you, yes, you are a club leader. Yes, there's paperwork. Yes, there's all this other stuff. But if it weren't for you having been there and mentoring these kids or mentoring these teens, that's where that positive youth development can really happen. But I also say teens can be mentors too. And that's one of the things I kind of thought about with Dane and his military um, club things that, you know, sometimes they have, and I'm going to show you some curriculum later that you could use, that they have teens mentoring other folks, then they get trained as a mentor. It's not like, you know, in 4-H, I like to say we prepare kids to then go and succeed, and then we talk about what they did to help them succeed again. But this trains them up for their role, and then we get in their role, we allow them to do it, and then we come back and have those conversations with them. Think about if you have a camp counselor training program or a day camp or something like that, that you're going to have your teens leading kids. A lot of times you don't just say, go take care of them. Like, no, you got to come in and kind of learn a little bit how to do this. No, you can't beat the kids. No, you can't do these other things. So that training, but then once we release them to actually do their job, but we just don't release, then as that mentoring role, you can say, hey, let's talk about about teen camp, how'd it go for you? What struggles did you have? What can we do to, to help that out? Do you see something that I'm not seeing? And then listen to those teens as they give you feedback. Uh-oh, I got a whole other slide of Andyisms. 4-H is not school. Unlike school, 4-Hers don't have to be there. Now, I'm sure there are probably some 4-Hers that will argue with you. Yes, I did. My mom grabbed me and drug me here this morning, so I had to be there. So some will argue with you. But I've also heard that my parents wouldn't, I wouldn't be here now if I didn't really want to be here and make some of the other efforts to get that transportation or things like that. So my point here, oh, I see that one from then. Give them a reason to come. Give kids a reason to be there. They don't have to be there. They can be sitting at home watching TikToks for six hours. They can be home playing Minecraft. They can be home doing all kinds of other things. But if they see the value, they see they're listened to. And one thing that I didn't see in that research, but I think is, is kind of prominent now, is that kids like to feel like they're making a difference. Get them a reason to feel like they are making a difference, that they are out there pursuing something that has a real difference. There's um, Nikita, let them pick a theme for the meeting. That's really cool. I remember one time with a group of teens that we had a different theme every meeting. And the thing is, we expected people to dress up. So it was people would dress up as the, the going theme. And that was back in the early 90s. And, and so we had 
comic characters and all that. It's kind of like pre-cosplay before it was called that. But you didn't have to, to really own it, but kids would, but then they would want to come and, and see the other people's costumes and then get into it, and then they'd have that conversation. Songs. Now, I'll put that one in there because I know a lot of times people say, oh, my gosh, little kids love cheesy camp songs. I'm a little coconut sitting in a what? What does a coconut sit in? Put it in the chat. Oh, I forget. They sit in a coconut rut. <laughs> and everybody, Do you want to try? I'm as crazy as I can be. I'm a nut in a rut, and I'm crazy. That's a crazy. That's a silly cheesy champ song. And if anybody ever had anybody sing Baby Shark, dee, 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 Baby Shark, that's a cheesy camp song. I see Dane roll his eyes. Oh my gosh. But guess what? Big kids love camp, cheesy camp songs too. They really do. But when you're working with teens and cheesy camp songs, let them own that it's cheesy. It is cheesy. And if they, and if you agree, yeah, it is cheesy. But I tell you what, the louder you sing, the more fun you're having. All these other kids, again, that teen mentoring role. See all those little kids? They idolize you. They see you singing these cheesy camp songs and getting into it. They're going to want to be like you and sing right along. And once I've discovered that once you kind of acknowledge the cheesiness of it, because they are, some of them are really, really, really cheesy. And some of them are kind of fun. But once you acknowledge it, Big kids will sing just as loud as the little kids will, and the little kids will join right along. And it gives them, again, that role of mentor and being looked up to as well. And also, believe it or not, there's a whole thing I like to teach about songs and teaching songs and engaging kids and, and using songs for leadership. Because that is a, a actual club office that I really like clubs having as a song leader. And at every meeting, we're going to sing a cheesy camp song. So that person at that time of the meeting, they sing a cheesy camp song. And here's the last one I'm going to talk about tonight. And this is kind of what I tell teens. If I go on them with a trip somewhere. Be where you're supposed to be. When you're supposed to be there. Dress the way you're supposed to be dressed. And be nice. I can say. Y'all need to be on time for everything. You got to get yourself blah, 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 blah. Or I can say, be where you're supposed to be. What does that mean? Well, you're supposed to be at this meeting. When you're supposed to be there at 8 o'clock, not 8.01, not 7.58. Well, you can be there at 7.58. That's still okay. Dress the way you're supposed to be dressed. If you're supposed to be wearing your 4-H t-shirt for the day, I expect you to be wearing it. And be nice. Be nice to people. It's that respect. Okay, so you want us to give all the respect and we want the respect from them, but then with your other peers that are there, how many people know that at this teen event, this may be the first time this kid's ever been away from home and you've been there for 15 years and you have that opportunity to talk with this kid and be nice to them to make them feel that belonging, which we really like in our 4-H clubs. But this is what I tell the teens when they go out. And as an example, and, and also when I go out with teens with things like like overnight when we used to be able to do those things, they would, my, I had a parent one time ask me, or, you know, my kid has a hard time getting up in the morning. Are you going to wake him up? And I said, be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. There's nothing in there about me waking anybody up. And if he's not able to wake himself up, maybe he's not quite ready yet to go out for this type of meeting, this type of event, because now we're having a little higher level expectation of our teens that they are responsible for doing these things. Yeah, you can hang out with your... When I used to watch teens at night, I say, yeah, you can hang out all night, but 8 o'clock in the morning, I expect you to be there dressed appropriately and ready to go. And I don't want to hear it, too, that you're tired. As, and just because you stayed up all night. Any comments about that particular Andyism? And there's lots more, but we'll just stop with those. Um, I know in particular, uh, one of the most common issues that we tend to have about our attendance, um, 
is because in particular, like a lot of, especially our little ones, their parents, you know, are military and they'll have, you know, work very early. So sometimes they're not able to make it because of their work and because the kids are, you know, too young to walk to mm-hmm. the school by themselves. That's very real. And unfortunately, um, we can't, you know, just like get into our car, drive over there and pick the child up. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, I've tried. Oh, one thing I've tried is with some of our older kids, you know, oh, they happen to live relatively close by. You know, maybe use like a, almost like a buddy system. And have those those bigger kids, you know, walk with those small kids to the school for club and bring them back. If the parent is unable to come to pick their child up. They're starting to chop up again a little bit. I think it's a problem with my connection. Yeah. Well, what I think you're saying is that you found a way to engage your teens in a response in this responsibility of of helping these younger kids get to your get to your programs. Um, and I was also going to say this one: the finally be where you're supposed to be. That's typically I, I don't say that to kids when they're when their parents are bringing them somewhere. I say that to kids when I'm going to like 4-H Congress and I'm taking 10 kids with me. And they're staying in dorms on campus or things of that nature. I don't say that this is not something if I'm working with like what you're saying in more of a club setting that, you know, y'all come. We're happy when you get here and we try to engage folks when they are when they are here. But what you're talking about in transportation, that's a real struggle. That's a real struggle. And I think that that's one thing that the pandemic has kind of helped a little bit is some of those transportation issues kind of go away if you're virtual, but the other issues that you have is that interaction and how do you keep people engaged when they've been on Zoom for school all day? Those, and so it's a different set of issues. So, but I, I appreciate um, your sharing there. Well, I will share one more since somebody somebody gave me a smiley face, so I will share another one. So the one about be where you're supposed to be and be nice, Another one I, I had, but not so much anymore, is I would tell parents, don't ever expect a phone call from me from from camp or from the no news is good news. If I call you, that probably means you need to come get your kid. And actually, and I, I said, I, I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to update Facebook and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that. And actually, one time I had a, a teen her senior year. She won a big scholarship and stuff like that. And I called her mom and her mom says, oh, my gosh, Mr. Andy, do I need to come get her? What'd she do? And <laughs> and I said, no, 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 no. I want to tell you that your daughter won this great big scholarship and she won this other thing. She said, are you sure? I'll come get her if I need to. <laughs> I said, no, no, really. She said, but you always said, I, I said, I know. And she had been in 4-H for, you know, like seven, eight, ten years. So she heard, heard the spiel. And but that's another Andyism I have as well. And the point of that is, is that we'll try to take care of the kids. I mean, you put them in our care. But if it gets to the point where there's a real issue at that point, I'll call you. But otherwise, you know, even good kids do dumb things. Bad kids do good things. What, however you want to phrase it. But that gives us that opportunity for youth development. But at some point, you know, you're not my dad. You can't tell me what to do. Yeah. At that point and say, well, maybe it's time I got your dad. And they can come and get you, and then they can. You wouldn't really do that, would you, Mr. Andy? I said, I'm on the phone right now. So, anyhow. So, here's some resources that I was talking to you about. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of go through them, and then I'm going to show you where they are on the Internet. I have given these resources so they can, they'll be sent out to you in a PDF form where you can click and go to them. But this exemplary youth leadership series, if you're not familiar with Poozer's, I can't ever say his name, and Kozner's exemplary leadership, 
this is a really cool targeted towards teens leadership type of it talks about what it is and gives you some specific activities that goes with it the mentoring ready set go mentoring i talked about teens and mentoring this is a mentoring curriculum that i've used before in mentoring programs if anybody's familiar with uh, tech wizards program i don't know if y'all do that there in louisiana but for a long time i was part of that program and mentoring was a big portion of it and this is this the curriculum that i used it is very good it is also kind of long so <laughs> it's one of those uh, the marshall mentoring program i've never used that one but i just feel like most of the things that show up on the 4-h website have the they've been reviewed and they've been known as good so if it's showing up there it's probably going to be good and finally this military partnership website that i'm going to share that's what we developed here in florida that is going to have a lot of resources i put this mindset book on here i don't know if y'all are familiar with mindset but if, if we want to talk theory you know they start talking they get they give you a doctor you guys talk about this so carol dweck talked about a fixed versus a growth mindset and this book here is amazing that it really when you read through it um it, it can and again i think the link i have you it might send you to amazon but it, it's just a location there are lots of places you can buy this book i'm not promoting going to amazon and buying anything i'm promoting the book however you can go about getting it. if you can go to the thrift store and pick it up for five bucks go for it or maybe they'll give it to you and but this is a really good book that goes through how to to encourage kids to develop that growth mindset and that's part of what we try to do in 4-h as well so i'm going to stop actually let me do this escape do y'all see the military partnership website this is it this has Looks if good. i click if i click on home this is what it looks like and all these tabs it's a google site if you're familiar with google sites i did not create this i have i will not dr paula did this and her military team but i'm part of the military being team and there we talk about all the bases in florida the ones that i typically serve were mayport jacksonville a little bit of camp blanding a little bit of the air force out there and way down here in the caribbean there's gitmo went down there and then i've also done some trainings over here so but this is the places that we support and the mission we support and then we go to OCONUS, and this is where we support other things. But the resources here you can use. And ones I want to show is, let's see if I can get it to do it. I like six count. This is one of my favorite ones. But you got to play it with your video on. And this actually talks you how to go through this game. It's a virtual engagement game. And what I, I like to do with games like this is that you can give this to a team and then they can teach the game. But I also believe, again, if you're doing a game, they practice it beforehand. The first time you do it, it's not at your meeting, you practice. But this talks about doing it. So, you know, one, two, three, uh, I can't even do it. But it's kind of confusing. It's really fun to do with your, your um, videos on. But that's what it looks like. And it has all these different helps up here to help you in videos and things like that. You know, it really, that's right. As a matter of fact, I drive past Camp, Camp Blanding. They have a cool museum out there with a lot of World War II paraphernalia. It's a cool camp. So let's go here. Here's the Ready, Set, Go. Now it ain't cheap, so you may want to to talk with somebody about that one. But what you get is actually a CD-ROM. You don't get the book, you get a CD-ROM. And a lot of computers these days may not have a CD-ROM on it, but you might be able to do a download. I get the CD-ROM uh, because I don't always trust the internet, <laughs> but I do have a CD-ROM and I can plug it in. This is really good. Here's the Marshall Mentoring Program. 
And this is the handbook, and there's lots of other parts of it. This is the exemplary leadership. It's written by Dr. Megan Stein, and this introduction, and then it talks about experiential learning. I think we're all pretty have heard about that. Do reflect, apply. That's not the one, that, but this is still cold. But it's not the one we typically see. But then it talks about facilitating. But then all these different ones. So challenge the process is one of them. Challenge the process. Then it has an activity down here that you can do at teens to challenge the process. So I found this to be a really, a really cool series. And when I found it, almost I literally almost fell out because I said this has been hiding in EDIS, which is part of the University of Florida's publication system for a couple of years, and I hadn't heard of it. I said this is amazing. So much that I, I sent the I was going to send the author a, a note saying how much I appreciated her doing this because it really is fantastic. And finally, uh, I don't see the link, but I show you the cover of the book. Mindset. Here's the the fact sheet that you'll get, and all these are links that you can then post. So with that, I'm going to stop my share and I will just open up for any discussion, comments, or anything else that we'd like to talk about as engaging teens. And I'd also, I'd really like to hear from some of the leaders out here because y'all are really the ones that have been doing a lot of things and a lot of things that may not have been talked about that might be affected. This would be a great time to share those things. And so if you guys want to share in the chat or share openly, oh, um, I, you, you can see the chat, uh, Andrew, right? So I don't know. I have can to. now. Okay, perfect. I figured out because how. I, perfect, great. Shatuan had shared something with you, so I just want to make sure you saw that. <laughs> oh, okay. Any other things but before I turn it back over? Thank you. Great presentation. Yeah, there's a lot of wealth of resources there that some of them I didn't know about too. So I'm just grateful that we can share those, um, especially that the uh, leadership series that you shared from Florida too. That's going to be tremendously helpful. And then I did share the Jamboard link for those that can't use their mic tonight but want to share on the Jamboard. You're welcome to do that. Um, share a little reflection from today. The Mindset book, um, I might get a copy and try to pass that around. So we'll see. And I appreciate you saying when you get your doctorate, you have to talk about theory because right, you know, right now I'm pretty heavy in some theory. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> So they beat it into you. You're like, oh, they do. <laughs> How much theory can you find? <laughs> yeah. But I, I really like mindset. I've read that book like three times. I like it so much. It's, it's really good. And, that, and the one I showed is the updated version. So, and just as an aside for my county agents, that's my regional side. I'm gonna. I got a whole bunch of books. I'm gonna pass out to everybody, and we're gonna have like a book club and talk about it because it is part of the the thrive model it's right there in the middle of it and i said you know that's low-hanging fruit we need to everybody needs to know what that means in order to put kids on that trajectory to thrive so i'm going to hush i'm going to mute myself all right so we're a little over time too i know we had to lose a few people, but that's okay. Um, and I just saw Dane popped up, so I didn't know if he had anything he wanted to share. I was going to go ahead and um, do a couple of reminders here. So in the chat, I did share a link to the Jamboard. So if you want to share a reflection on that, 
um, you can go ahead and do it. And so uh, just appreciate uh, Dr. Tolley from joining us today and sharing a lot of uh, great material. And then also with his Andyisms, various things that were very helpful. Um, I know that this was a session that many of us uh, benefited from tremendously. And I'm also going to share now we do put these webinars on the virtual leader classrooms that they're available. I will share tonight uh, the PDFs it, or hopefully if I get the video recorded and uploaded, that recap email comes out tonight. Um, and then you'll get all those the PDF that he created for you as well. I do have a link to the evaluation. So if you're working on your master volunteer portfolio and you need the certificate for that, um, please complete the evaluation. And I'm just share that link as well. So go ahead and do that. And it should send you a certificate to your email. You can keep that. And when you're doing your um, master volunteer portfolio or if you're uploading your involvement to Give Pulse for the volunteer awards, you can go ahead and um, and use that that use that link get their certificate. If you don't know about either of those things, just make sure you view um, the resource folder that I do send all the links, uh, all the materials in after the call. I put the link to the resource folder from the previous conversations, um, and then also check out the newsletter as well. So great. Uh, evaluation is in the chat. Does anybody else have anything to share for the evening? I know we're uh, a little bit over time tonight. I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Great session. And uh, so very, very thankful for our special guest tonight. And I will get this uh, webinar uh, posted and I will get the, uh, the resources sent out to y'all. But thank you all so much for engaging. Um, especially for those of you that are new to the call tonight, I believe Dane was new tonight. So we're happy to have you, hope to have you again in the future. And um, thank you all so much.